Hello everyone, Ace here, back again with another video. I hope you guys are all having an absolutely fantastic day, because I know I am. And in today's video, as you can probably guess from the title, we will be starting part one of my No Confidant run of Persona 5 Royal. But before we get straight into this video, I just want to make some slight adjustments to the rules, and add a few. One. When I mention no gaining social stats through time progressing ways, since Joker has a chance of getting closer with the confidant through sleeping, by getting the blue music note, by dreaming of a friend, if there's literally nothing else to do, I'll just study, play video games, read, etc. just to only pass the time. Two. Since confidants such as Morgana and Marukis are forced in this run, we will be leveling them up, but we will not be fusing any personas that will result in obtaining the persona of the Magician or Counselor Arcana, and no doing any of Morgana's follow-up attacks, but I will be allowing showtimes minus the ones that involve Joker, unless you guys think otherwise. 3. Most of you guys have suggested that I should level up Kasumi and Akechi for the third semester, but to be honest, since I've never not leveled them up before, I'm not entirely sure what happens if I don't do it versus actually do it. But, if Maruki's palace is accessible and completable without their confidence, I will not be talking to either one of them unless forced to. And four, similar to the DLC persona rule I mentioned in the previous video, I'm also going to try and not make any infiltration, infiltration tools, minus lockpicks, I am allowing those, and I'm going to also try not to use any of the DLC accessories, but depending on how hard the run will be, I may use them. I am also a very forgetful person, so there is a very high chance I will accidentally break a rule without noticing. If that is the case, please leave a comment down below on which rule I broke and with a punishment to do for the next run until the end of the palace. So for example, I accidentally fuse a persona that is Magician Arcana, I actually use it at least once. Tell me that I broke that rule in the comments, and then leave an idea for a punishment, like, oh, you can't use this party member, or you can't heal in battle, or you can't use this persona, or you can't use any personas involving this arcana, or you can't use any personas that have these type of moves. Literally anything, whether I listed it or not, if you think it's appropriate, like, depending on how harsh the rule I broke was, like, if I broke a really bad rule that was, like, the whole point of the run, you can give me a punishment that is very deadly, but if it was a minor rule that I broke, for example the infiltration tools, you can just give me a small punishment. And that punishment will go on up until I finish the next palace. And getting magician and counselor personas is allowed through recruitment and negotiations, just no fusing to get them. And that wraps up the rules again for this run. Just thought I'd clarify a few more things and added rules for the run to make it more in-depth. Oh, and I just want to say thank you all so much from the bottom of my heart for the amount of engagement and support the previous video had. With all the tips that you guys left me in the comments, I truly never have had this much interaction with any of my audience before, and I never thought I'd actually be able to engage with a ton of people in the comments like this. <laughs> I think the fact that you guys all loved the idea and left tips for me on the run just proves you want to see more. So I'm here to deliver. Oh, and if it wasn't clear enough to you already, you guys all voted for Maruki's palace to be completed, so we will be doing his confidant as well. But again, no fusing personas that give the result of the counselor or magician arcana. But getting them through negotiations slash recruitment is 100% allowed. Oh, and I'm sorry if my voicing over the gameplay doesn't seem or sound good. I'm recording this at like 10 o'clock at night, and I've barely gotten any sleep at all for the past few weeks, and the fact that I have to wake up at 6 a.m. for school doesn't really help, so I'm trying. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm sorry if my voicing doesn't seem as good as it did in part zero, but don't worry, I'm still trying my hardest, so hopefully there's not a big difference. <laughs> and without further ado, let us get into part one of my No Confidant run of Persona 5 Royal. So, we pick up from where we left off and went to sleep. We notice that this virus on our phone has been stuck on our phone longer than COVID has been stuck on Earth. The next day arrives and we head downstairs for breakfast to try some curry that is more bold in flavor than we are with our social lives. We say bye to our dad and then we spend an unhealthy amount of time attempting to navigate our way around the station to find the Ginza line. Only for us to miss our train just barely and then we end up going back home and quitting the run. 
Just kidding. We wait for the next train to arrive, and then we sit in the rain with this girl that Joker wants to give his babies to, but asking that's not really the best conversation starter, so we stay quiet. We see her get in a car with someone cosplaying as EDP-445, and then we see a Volker boy having a temper tantrum because he was jealous On got to be in the car with the pedophile and not him. We should talk each other, then hit it off, as boys usually do, and make our way to school together, only for us to end up in Bowser's castle. Joker thinks that the reason he's seeing the castle is because he thinks his curry was laced with something, and that's why the flavor was so bold and strong. Our oblivious asses can't tell if this is a school or not, and then we get the shit beaten out of us. And then we wake up in a cell. The Minecraft YouTuber shows up only wearing pink panties and a robe, and then he beats the shit out of Ryuji. And then we speak up, which is a first for us, and then he pins us to the wall, and because that's one of our kinks, it activates our schizophrenia, causing the voices in my head to ask me if saving the woman the other day was worth it or not. We say it wasn't, and then we got humbled for choosing the wrong answer in a non-choice-based video game. We then become an airbender and push everyone away from us. Then we look back up, and right as the wind lifted up Kamashita's robe, causing our eyes to bleed because of what we just saw underneath his clothing. It scarred us so much that one of the voices in our head manifested into a demon because he wanted to unsee everything he just witnessed and beat the shit out of Kamashita just as much as we do. We smash two pumpkins and then lock the king in a cell because he's been a bad boy. We run to try and find an exit and then we find a cat named an exit. He shit talks Ryuji by calling him a blonde bimbo and then guides us to the exit. We vented out, but he stayed behind. Some cops caught us playing hooky and then we head back to school with one class remaining. We meet Dream again and then we head to the faculty office where a raggedy ass looking homeroom teacher takes us to the final but technically first class of the day. We stay silent when introducing ourselves and then we get a stare colder than the other side of my pillow. After class, we continue to have effects from the curry that our father gave us, and then we talk to Ryuji on the rooftop. We head home, and then our dad starts throwing a hissy fit, but we just sit there and take it. We head off to bed, and then Igor summons us to his velvet room just to let us know that he's the one who gave us the coronavirus. And then we wake up the next day and head to school. We see a young girl offer her seat to an old lady, but Sonic the Hedgehog over here stole the seat as if we were playing musical chairs. That same girl comes to thank us for some reason, and then we arrive at school. The teacher calls on us to answer a question, but since we want the attention on us to be over as soon as possible, we just say a completely random answer and actually end up getting it right. Even though we feel more confident now, which we don't want for this run, at least the other students can at least process the fact we can get a decent grade on in a class. We notice Kamo's shithead trying to riz up Takamaki, and then a random stranger tries to jump us as soon as we leave campus. Together we try to find the castle, and in order to do that, though, Ryuji had to look through my search history. Luckily, I wiped everything off before transferring to this school, so that's a major W. We meet an exit, and he helps us infiltrate Kamashita's training hall of love so we can memorize all the faces of everyone experiencing an IRL Dagarampa execution. Oh yeah, and Ryuji gave us a block earlier too. As we escape the castle, Kameyameya tries to stop us in the main hall, gets two Bicorn to somehow unfairly defeat us, and then Ryuji awakens to a persona that looks like it was ripped straight out of One Piece. After we defeat the two little horsies and one big horsey, we see On as an OnlyFans model, and then an exit proceeds to get turned on for the first time in his life. We threaten to come back, and then we leave the castle. Out in front of the castle, an exit proceeds to insult Blondie again, then cries like a little baby bitch when we tell him that we don't want to participate in his plan. Then we leave him in the dust as we left the palace. Ryuji then reveals that he has the fattest crush on me, and then sadly makes me become his friend. And then we go out to eat, and he proceeds to scream at the top of his fucking lungs in the middle of a goddamn restaurant, and continuously adds random shit to my beef bowls without permission. We are then forced to give this track trader our phone number, and then head back home. We ignore whatever our dad is saying because we are Gen Z and we constantly are addicted to our phones. We were so exhausted from the palace that the Joker's responses to Ryuji's text messages were just the first things that he thought of, instead of honest responses because he really just wants this conversation to end so we can go to bed. Our dad then tells us to stop seeing men because he never had the chance to talk to any because he's been always been socially awkward towards them. We then go upstairs and unpack the rest of the stuff that we took from our hometown, which takes much longer than it should. Why do Japanese games always do this shit, man? And then we write in our diary everything we did today, since we obviously should be honest and write every bit of criminal activity that we participate in, and then we head off to bed. Thank you all so much for the newest addition to this series. You have no idea how much you guys sticking around here means to me. As such a small YouTuber, I appreciate each and every single one of you. I was only able to record this video today because school got cancelled because of a hurricane, so it most likely will take me a while to upload normally, so uploads may be scarce, but I'll still try my hardest. Oh, and again, keep in mind that other videos may be released in between this series, just in case I need a break from this series due to burnout, demotivation, rage, or something like that. 
Anyways, if you guys kept leaving down advice, tips, criticism, ideas, or anything on your mind about my channel, or me, or my content, feel free to just leave a comment. Even if it's just to say hi, or what your thoughts on the video were, I try to reply to every single one. I also usually don't like saying this, but, I mean, if you would like, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel, and you can also hit the bell so you would always get a notification of when a new video goes live. But, of course, you don't have to do that at all. And with that, I think that does it for part one of Persona 5 Royal, but no confidants. I hope you guys all have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.